Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday. Over here we have Lee moving up into the southern states, finally starting to get out of here slowly to the northeast, bringing whole tons of rain into the southern states here, causing flooding problems and all sorts of stuff like that, finally moving away and will be taking its time, probably getting stuck for a while over the center of the country, but is moving out finally from the north Gulf Coast area, should hopefully dry them out eventually here. The other thing we're looking at is Hurricane Cadi over here, and this is just beautiful. This storm has turned into such a beauty over the last day or so. Look at all the outflow coming out to the south. This is perfect looking outflow. You can tell a lot about a storm by the way the cirrus clouds look coming from it, and this is the sign of a very strengthening storm here with these spiky little cirrus clouds propagating directly outward all the way around the storm here. If this outflow is lacking anywhere, it's in the southeast quadrant. But the fact that it has it to the south and the west and the north here indicates a very healthy storm. And she's likely pushing category four already. The NHC still has her down at a two. I don't believe a word of it. This is likely a three, if not a category four hurricane already with this contracting eye wall with a completely clear eye and IR temperatures of over plus 12 on the Dvorak analysis. So this is this is a strengthening storm right now. And she's pushing to become a strong major. And I don't think she's going to make Cat 5 super hurricane like Isabel, though she does have that look. If she didn't have these spiral bands off to the northeast, I'd say she was trying to become annular in here. And she may even look more annular with time later today. <coughs> but she is going to be strengthening a little bit and she is becoming a major in this area of the world like we figured was going to be likely with her and she's moving northwest the models eventually take her out just like we've been talking about directly between the uprights of Cape Hatteras and Bermuda in here with neither area getting significantly affected though high surf will be the concern along the coast a couple of the model runs yesterday were getting things way too close for comfort here to Cape Hatteras and even a couple runs in New England and you can see the Canadian still takes this to Cape Cod looks like an outlier looks kind of unrealistic here this should try to come west but then we'll get turned east northeast very sharply by the positively tilted trough left by Lee over here of the eastern United States and you can see the steering pattern that we have the highest to the northeast of where Cadia is and the steering flow is generally going to try to take her out here now this one trough here is leaving and leaving the Lee low behind in here so the ridge is going to try to build in more to the north of her but then this trough will eventually work its way in here and after she tries to curve west she'll move sharply sharply out this way, so this shouldn't be too much of a concern for the eastern seaboard. Keep an eye on her until she's passing you, but it looks like the models are in good agreement now, very bunched together on where she's going to go. Hopefully not too for anyone. Now we have the European out to day five here, and what we're looking at is you can see Lee's moving out, but notice he's got a tail. And this tail is going to be drifting down towards the northwestern Yucatan, and the models are starting to latch on to some kind of a low developing here west of the Yucatan in five days or so, three to five days, we might see some sort of mischief going on here. And with the Lee upper low still sitting over the center of the country, there's still a weakness over the Gulf of Mexico. Steering currents are weak, but this is likely to move north-northeast towards the Gulf Coast again. And that's what the GFS and the Canadian have with this. The European's a little bit stubborn and tries to build in the ridge here and move Lee directly into Mexico. That seems a little bit unlikely given that the weakness will remain up here to the north, but we'll see steering currents will be weak. I can't really see this winding up a whole ton because if you look at how low the pressures are over North America, there's no real pressure gradient over the Gulf of Mexico. So there's no air rushing in towards the storm to help convergence and make the air pile up. So if we get something in here, I would think tropical depression, weak tropical storm, especially since upper air conditions are not going to be that great with an upper trough sort of sitting down here shearing things. So we may not see a significant system, but we may see another annoying little thing try to bring rain to the North Gulf Coast, but we'll have to see how that goes. So we go out to day seven, and the European tries to move it in, but notice what's coming across into the northeastern Caribbean here, weak little low pressure area, and by day 10 we have a storm developing near Cuba on the European, and this is now coming on board with the ideas that I've been talking about for the last couple of days about how the Caribbean is going to have issues 
near the 15th of September and during the third week of September I think we're going to have some development in the area from the Bahamas, Southern Gulf and Northwestern Caribbean and here we're going to have issues and we were talking about how the temperatures for the next week over the United States are supposed to be much colder than normal over the south and southeast United States and this is a big change from what this because it's been blowtorch hot over the entire southern and eastern US for this entire summer season. Now We've had very little going on in the Caribbean in terms of significant storms. We haven't really had anything. We had Harvey, and that was about it. We had Don pass through before he developed, and we had Emily for a little bit of a time. But the Northwest Caribbean has not seen a whole lot here, neither of the Bahamas area. Um, with the exception of Irene that came through. We haven't had much development in terms of this area right near South Florida, southwestern Bahamas, Cuba, and the Northwest Caribbean. We've been fairly quiet in there. But now that we're now that we're cooling off the southern U.S., we're going to charge up this area with air because the warmth during the heat wave has meant that the pressures were very low up here. And I explained that this really kind of lessens the pressure gradient here and doesn't allow trade winds to come in and pile up in the Caribbean and help support convergence and thunderstorms. Once the air cools down, we're going to end up raising the pressures here and have a net area of anomalous high pressure, which is going to help force air down towards the Caribbean. And with the monsoon trough too far to the north here. It's farther north than normal, and there is a little bit of thunderstorm activity over the eastern Pacific now, but there's nothing forecast to really develop there, and we've had the monsoon trough farther north than normal, so you get southwesterlies coming out of the Pacific, northeasterlies coming out of here anomalously, and then you can get circulation start to develop in the northwestern Caribbean and support tropical waves coming in and trying to develop in this area, and that's what we're going to be watching for. And you can see what results on the GFS ensembles 13 days out. We get ridging of high pressure over to the north and then lower than normal heights over the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, and Bahamas area, which indicates a release of latent heat into the atmosphere and a lowering of surface air pressure. So this area is getting primed for some sort of activity. And you can see that the mean break in the ridge is over the center of the eastern United States and over the Gulf Coast, which means that with the Texas Ridge still trying to hang back here and keep them dry, we're going to have two different tracks that are possible. If we get a storm in here, it's either going to move into Central America and Mexico south of the Texas Ridge, or it's going to curve up into the eastern Gulf, Florida, or Bahamas area, and I think that this is the more likely solution, the latter one, to have a storm develop and curve up somewhere within this window here within the next couple of weeks, September 15th and onward, the third week of this month, I think we're going to have to deal with this. And of course, we have the MJO coming back into our area of the world. We've already, we've got sinking motion here, and we've already got all this showing up, and we're going to have to watch these waves down here as they come west-northwest over the next several days, perhaps not that far north, but somewhere in here we may have to watch them try to develop. And we've already got that, so if we're in downward motion now and we already have such vigorous waves, we're going to have the green showing up within 10 days by September 15th. We're going to have upward motion across the Caribbean and all the way out into the Central Atlantic right during the peak, the very peak week of the season. We're still, we're still lighting up the lighting up the light bulbs here in the Atlantic. We've got a lot of activity to deal with and we're going to continue having to watch this right now with the hurricane passing north of the Caribbean. Things are dead quiet in here, but after she's gone, we're going to watch for this to cool down up here and start incubating this area of the Caribbean for possible development. And we, you know, we had Irene go here. We've got Katia going here, Katia. They're cooling off the water in here. There's a cold tongue still in here left by Irene. There's going to be a cold tongue of water left by Katia. Overall, the water in here is going to be cooler, and that incubates the warmer water that's sitting down to the south in the Caribbean. It induces sinking motion here and helps air to rise to its south. So there's a lot of things coming together here that support the pattern that supports a storm that will be in this area during the third week of September, and the models are now starting to hint at it so that something like this definitely makes sense after September 15th. So we will have to keep an eye on this during the next while, and we'll keep an eye on these tropical waves in the near term as they come west-northwest behind Katia. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.